Hey, boy. Gonna think about this uh, one. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You're good. I'm gonna think about this one and then call it for that. So let's do it. Definitely four bedding here. Sizing, I'm just gonna make it like about three X Landon's raise. Out of position, four bed sizing probably should be a bit larger than in position. Not really something I'm all that concerned with. I think three X is fine. I'm make it a little bit more, 250. Nice, very easy decision. I do not think I would play, I would play jams here. The reason for that being my quote unquote bluff, even though it's a bad word for it, would be ace king off at a mix. Cause I want to jam kings pre. Like getting kings in pre and getting him to fold a hand like ace queen, it's a pretty sick win. Aces, I would trap here all day. Kings, I would jam, I would jam ace king off. And then I would call Ace queen suited versus Nick. I would float ace queen suited as, or ace queen off as well and see a four bet, but that's out of theoretical range construction, so to speak. But this is a fun hand to call a four bet with and get into the action. So let's do it. Stacked pot ratio, looks like about, I don't know, two max. I think it's the type of board where probably should just start loading small bets at a really high rate. So I'm just gonna kind of do that and not really think too much about it. I mean, a checking range should probably exist. But I do think I flop pretty heavy here versus whatever his call for is. It's about 600-ish uh, in the pot. I think I'm just gonna make it like 150. 50, even that feels big. Stacked pot ratio less than two. I think I could just do something silly, like almost like a hundred. Yeah, like one sixth, just do 125. 125? If you were to pick a flop that did not give us an actual quote unquote value hand, if it give us hope, this is the one. So this is a fun spot where I don't play any raises here as he's uncapped, has the overpairs, has the ace jack suited, has queens, kings, aces, right? And I don't really have fours and fives, at least in a theoretical sense. They don't really three by pre. I do have jacks and he has jacks, but he has a very clear overpair advantage. But with our draw and backdoor, we have a very easy continue on the flop. And then on turns, if he checks to us, depending on what they are, we're going to check back. And that seems a little bit off to some, I'm sure, to check back a hand that has a straight draw and things of that nature. But we have a hand that definitely does not want to get check jammed on. So we're going to call flop and then turn. If he checks to us, we're going to check back. And if he bets a small size, we're going to call. So let's try to spike it. Pretty good turn. Pretty much never improves him really far ahead. Two options are check and hope that he leans too aggressive. That would be how he's required to behave to make checking a better play than betting for me. Just sort of in the exploitative spectrum of it. I'm not really too concerned with assessing whether or not betting is higher EV than checking. I don't really feel like I have too much objective information to make that type of decision. Like, yeah, Landon's capable. He's highly capable, but his range is gonna have a lot of showdown value. I mean, I can't imagine that he's floating too wide. I mean, maybe some king-queen backdoor flush draw is the bottom of his range, and maybe specifically versus that hand, if I check rather than bet small, I, I might maximize. But overall, I just feel like standardizing my 
my sequence here is completely fine. And even as I talk about it, like maybe this is just the best point. I'm trying to give reasons because it's almost more satisfying for the viewer. But like the point is there's just not enough objective information on what his tendencies are to to confidently say that checking is higher EV than betting here. When that happens, there's two things you can do. You can either double down on micro analysis, blowing smoke up your own ass and acting like you know what you're talking about so that you can feel better about whatever decision you arrive at. Or you can just say, I really don't know. I don't have enough confidence around how he's gonna behave and just do one or the other. So theoretically, if I do bet, it should be small. I'm just gonna keep with that plan. KMF. Okay, so he bets 200, getting a sick price. How much are you behind? He's got like five, five. five. He's got like 500 behind. Five. Okay, yeah, cool. Nice, uh, 500 behind. We are going to continue. Um, if he checks us, we're going to have an easy jam on the river. And if we make our hand, that's great. But if not, uh, that's fine too, because we get to see river. And I don't think I would play any jams here, as he's still uncapped. And I would never jam any of my value hands. Call it ace-jack, call it pocket jacks, call it queens, kings, uh, which would jam period, and then aces would be a very easy trap. So, easy continue. Check, check. Did I call? Something happened? At this point, it's not really an option anymore whether or not to bet or check. I'm polar. I'm as polar as ever, and uh, he's as condensed as ever, so the hand just really needs to maximize by shoving. Probably shoving any river, to be honest. I, you know, maybe a jack you check, but that's not really in his range. Not in his range enough to stop me, but uh, this is definitely a very clear brick. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that wins. That's no good. Get that shit out of here. That's in the game, baby. What happened? He had I had a straight. I had a straight. <laughs> he didn't have a very good hand. Where'd that three good come hand. from? <laughs> you had a very good hand. He had the best hand. He had the best hand. You forbet for the hand, right? Oh, yeah. So you told him you had the best hand. I tried to tell him. The show goes on, baby. Best in the world. 30. Okay, we have a suited A6 here. Um, the suited wheels, some of which I'll three bet, big blind versus low jack here. Um, look like the middling ones. Uh, I just dominate his suits a lot of the time, and uh, I want to have hands like this in my flying range, so I think it's pretty easy to defend. Um, never going to lead ace high boards from the big blind versus an initial razor, so checking range here. Yeah. <clears throat> He has more 3x than us. That is a given. We have more ace x than he does, proportionally with our opening range. So this is a good board for us. And I think we're gonna start with a min bet and force him to fold all of the hands that he has that don't connect at all. And we get to win. So that's the strategy. So let's bet one big blind yet again. Ten. Okay, we faced the minimum bet here, um, which I think makes a lot of sense. 
Uh, Landon wants to make a lot of my king high, queen high hands indifferent. Um, he's going to be able to start applying more pressure on later straights to some of my better hands, like pairs, uh, lower than the ace. Um, he also possesses 0 3x here, except for ace 3 suited. Um, whereas I can have quite a bit more suited threes than him, so uh, his, he's lacking another advantage, which is going to incentivize him to go smaller. Uh, not really sure if I would ever check raise this board with a three. Um, I think probably I can. Uh, I'm going to have some bluffs, such as four, five suited, five, six suited, just various backdoor gutter type like hands. I think this hand's just a very clear call. I um, don't think we get any value from many worse hands by raising, and uh, we're just going to have to play this hand cautiously moving forward. But. Uh, so our hand fits right in the middle of our range, where we beat some of his floats, being king high and worse pairs. And bluffing now, or quote unquote bluffing, doesn't really accomplish very much. Sure, he folds some cards with two overs, but sometimes we're gonna have some ace x that we check back, some other over pairs like kings, queens, jacks, tens, you name it. And uh, this is not a hand that fits into a bluff. Four five suited would fit into a bluff, right? With a gutter and then five high. And the better ones being the ones that block his three four and three five suited. So we'll call it four five of clubs, but that's not what we have, so we have a check back. Okay, so Landon's check on the turn uh, resembles a range that's pretty showdown driven. Um, I think a lot of his bluffs are, you know, that really have next to no showdown value. You're going to keep barreling on that card. It's pretty inconsequential. He still possesses a pretty strong. Uh, Asex good kicker advantage. Um, so like his jack 10 and things of that nature probably aren't gonna shut down all that much on an eight. Um, so I think like kings, queens, jacks, a lot of the lower pairs check a lot of this card. Um, he can have some weak ace X that he checks on this turn. I mean, we're chopping now with ace nine or lower. Um, and I don't really think he has many Bet check bets as bluffs here, except for maybe like six, seven, something like that, which I block. Like, so I really just think by checking, uh, I don't really think we're getting him to stab with much. Uh, I don't even really know if he goes for value with like a lot of those lower pairs. And even if he does, we can just bet big now and get value from those anyways. Um, yeah, so I think I'm just going to bet here, but I don't really know how big I can go. Uh, I don't have a ton of available bluffs. I mean, like my king high type hands that like float to the flop, queen highs, I guess those have to bluff now. They don't really have much showdown value. Um, but if I am going to bet, when I do bet for value here, it's pretty much just always ace I don't bet like a lower pair, so it's... I don't know, I feel like I'm somewhere in between the merge and the pull when I bet here. Um, so I don't think I can like over bet, but I think I can go like relatively large. So the pot's uh, 85. I'm just gonna try and get called by like a lower pair and... Yeah. Fifty-five. 55 into 50, 75, 85. 55 into 85. Okay, so let's play the logic game. Logic game says, I don't think you bet to 10 because I have an ace. So it's hard to get caught by worse and I still have under pairs. Like pairs over that one. Kings, queens, jacks. Does he bet an eight? No, because sometimes I call with a 10. King 10, queen 10. Jack 10 that I decide to check back sometimes, right? A king has that check back. So what he's betting here is he's betting an ace or he's betting nothing. He, sometimes he'll have three X, 
but I think a disproportionate amount of his 3x would be check raising the flop, attacking my high card hands that I see bet, because this board is better for me than it is for him. So now, he's either bluffing, and we beat that. Sometimes he thin value bets us with king 10. I doubt it, because the 10x chops with an ace, right? Tens and threes with an ace. So betting a 10 doesn't really accomplish much. Betting an eight, sure, sometimes. But I think he has more high cards that he's gonna bluff here than he has ace x. So because of that, I'm gonna call, and sometimes I'll lose, but that's fine, because it's not that serious. Go! He wins. You can put 55 in there. I have a set now. Give me 55. You mean 45? 55. Sure. Actually, it's fine. Fuck, fuck you guys. Uh, with Berkey on about 80 blinds, I'm just gonna use my 100 big blind ranges. Maybe widen them just a bit. Um, this is a lower frequency three bet on button, higher frequency call. And in real time, I'm not, I'm not mixing, I'm not trying to use these uh, frequencies in real time, but I know like a, a, a rough estimate of where they are and I'll use environmental factors like how valuable it is to isolate a certain player to, to make that choice. But this is majority call, so I'm gonna call. Okay, we have a close spot here. Um, I'm not gonna be squeezing with this hand. Uh, I prefer to, you know, I'm gonna do, be doing that more with like suited Broadway and that sort of thing. Off, junky offsuit Broadway like this. I'm uh, either gonna flat or fold. I think when Chris flats the button, um, like if it had just folded to me after Berkey raised, I would have been more inclined to call um, since at most we can only be out of position as two players, but now like if we call, we invite in Landon. And we'll be out of position against three players if that happens. Um, but the hand that plays pretty poorly does not realize its equity well, is easily dominated. Um, yeah, you know what? I think, I just don't think I can win versus these players with a hand like this. Uh, I think I'm just gonna avoid the spot. Yeah, I know, this is one of those hands that if different positions opened, I would be more inclined to continue. Call it button open, small blind call. I can call or three bet. Cut off open button call, I can call. But under the gun should be, your low jack should be tighter. Button call, and uh, we have a fold. But I would have defended versus if Chris folded. Okay, uh, this will be a fun one. Uh, very advantageous swap for us. <clears throat> High C bet frequency, when we're in position here versus a big blind defend, we actually get to have some over bets or at least large bets on this particular texture. Uh, given our exact hand holding with the high-low king, uh, king five, um, we get to do a lot of equity denial slash bluffing with this particular hand class. Uh, so we'll be looking to utilize um, a lot of our 5x in the polar region of our uh, multi-street bets. Reason being that the outs are clean, uh, having the king is nice because we get to rep ace-king. We have um, blocking over king-queen, which will be some of Chris's defense. And we unblock both spades and clubs. So we're gonna start here with... We're just trying to think if I have two sizings when I'm out of position versus button here on this texture. Um, I don't think so. Uh, I think this is like a B33 spot. Uh, so there is 75 in the pot. We're going to go with 25. 25? 25. <clears throat> Advantage texture for Berkey. 
obviously. Uh, facing, smaller size. We're looking at about a third here. Uh, the objective of my range here as the capped range uh, is really just to realize as much equity as I possibly can. That will start with my middle equity, mostly through a call. Uh, I will have raises on this texture facing this size. Probably <clears throat> some ace, jack, ace, 10. I don't want him to be able to push that much equity through for just this smaller size, uh, which represents a wider range. So I want to have a raising strategy, and that is probably going to be combos like ace, jack, ace, 10, uh, fives. Ace, five probably isn't in range. Uh, and then also perhaps a little bit of jack nine, nine, 10. Jack 10, king, jack, sort of just want to call. Anyway, I have middle equity though. So this is the range of calls. That kind of changes everything. Uh, the issue that we do run into here with our particular holding is that it does serve for a good three street blast off when the board texture remains rather static. Um, but in this particular instance, the club comes through, rendering our range at a bit of a disadvantage now. Uh, Chris should have the flush advantage as he'll be defending all suited aces which I'm probably personally opening, but uh, most low jack ranges probably aren't. Uh, he'll also have, I mean, the thing is like, it's in reality, it's probably pretty symmetrical uh, because I'm probably opening a lot of hands that I shouldn't necessarily be opening from this position. Nevertheless, uh, even with symmetry, being out of position is a reason why we just basically give up the betting lead here. Uh, so we're gonna continue with a check. Uh, sticking to the plan here, our objective is to realize equity. Perky still has lots of better hands. A bet would not really accomplish anything. <clears throat> uh, so, gonna take it one street closer to showdown. Okay, uh, Chris's range shape changes pretty dramatically uh, on a check back. Um, he'll be relatively protected. When I say relative, I mean he'll have hands like ace-jack in range uh, so that he has bluff catchers on the river. Um, we probably don't beat anything uh, because his nothing is pretty heavily allocated to bets on the turn. Can we turn our hand into a bluff? Where will our bluff candidates be coming from at this point? Um, our hand ranks higher than a hand like Jack-10 or even King-10 for that matter. Um, and we wouldn't, we certainly wouldn't be bluffing those in full combos. Uh, I don't really see any purpose in blocking. It poses no challenge to Queen-X or even his pocket pairs that have gotten this far. Uh, if we would like to put some pressure on hands like sixes, eights, nines, and I guess tens, uh, would need to be betting somewhere in the neighborhood of three quarters pot to full pot. I just don't think our hand functions that way, though I could be underutilizing my bluffs at this point, um, being that I probably don't have too many singular club hands. Uh, in any event, when we're wide and we're unsure, we just defer to surrender, when we have yeah. showdown value, that is. Happy to show down this part of my range, uh, being the queen X. There's no real purpose to betting. Hmm, yes, I see. 
Alright, everyone. Are we playing a tournament? Can you add on? I was just gonna ask to take some off, actually. I went in every pot this last two hours. Erky's stuck, so now he wants to put the straddle on. This is going to be the stone bottom of my call. Oh. Um, so this hand, because you're still because we're suited today, we're getting a pretty better, uh, slightly better price. It's slightly too good to fold. Um, there are some hands that I do fold in this spot, but I don't think the hand that contains the king wants to fold here. advantage texture for me, more fluid on the spectrum between dynamic and static. I should retain nut advantage despite the fact that I have less combos of deuces than uh, Landon or Chin. The fact that I have all over pairs, sevens in full, should provide me with the nut advantage. Uh, my aggression is definitely not restricted by nut advantage. Uh, in terms of coverage, how my range lands on runouts shouldn't matter too much. Like on 4x, 5x, my range still interacts pretty well. So I don't really see my C bets being too restricted here. Uh, if this were a heads up pot, I would have a split bet where I would take a small size with a range of hands and a big size with a range of hands. <clears throat> this one would be kind of in the middle because queen jack would be large and uh, however with king queen I dominate all the Broadway combos. So we're just gonna go small here, gonna go quarter. Forty. Forty? Okay, so his bet seems relatively okay. I would like to see a bigger size because he's leveraging an overpair advantage where Chris, or sorry, where Chin and I are going to have the sets. Chin is going to have two pairs and also some overpairs like eights and nines that aren't gonna do bet all the time, but might do bet sometimes. Um, my hand's a very easy call. Um, I don't think we played that many raises. I think with sets I would call here as well, as the SPR is low enough with the additional ante, uh, well, the, the third blind, to decrease the SPR to have, I'll have no problem being all in on the turning river. So we have an easy continue, and then we're also going to float versus a raise from the blind, depending on the action, as we have one of those hands that has just enough equity to continue versus a raise, depending on the size of it. So we're going to call. Uh, I think with bet and a call in front, I think our hand has to fold. Um, I don't think our hand wants to check raise. Um, yeah, I think we have to fold, unfortunately. Let me think. Yeah, it's gonna be really hard to realize equity, especially with how short Chris is, betting into two players. We have better deuce sexes, I think, like deuce four, things like that, that can continue. King deuce is not great. I think we have to release with Landon coming in. So Landon and I share the five six here. To carry through this card, I really want better properties. Uh, I do have a spade, but the queen of spades does not particularly help. I expect Landon to have uh, some ace-high spade combos, like ace-deuce of spades, ace-three of spades. Probably not in full, but certainly in range. 
uh, board is deteriorating for my single pair hands and my ace highs. So I would expect uh, to start checking now uh, on a dynamic card, start checking some combos of over pairs and carrying through with only my better polar candidates. So I'm just gonna start with a check on, on this card with this part of my range. Did he check? Okay, so he checks and I think that his range is not going to be protected as it should and I'm not going to get jammed on here very frequently. Um, I have five, six suited. I have the sets here where he has them in very low frequency with this line, perhaps even no frequency. So I'm going to use this hand as a merge between getting some protection from his overcards as well as being able to get some better hands to potentially fold. Call them Not that many. I don't think he ever folds a 7x, but I don't think he has enough value here. Like, I don't really get fucked by betting. So there's 240 in the pot. He's got about 500, a little more. I'm going to go for a 75% size. So we're gonna go 160. 160. 160. Hold on at the. It's gonna be pretty difficult to realize the equity of this part of my range, like the two over card combos, especially when I have a spade. Not a good card to have. Uh, when you are thinking through these spots strategically in game, it's critical to start with the properties of your range as opposed to the properties of your exact hand. That will really guide you because your hand only matters within the context of range. <clears throat> Let's see, landed bet 160, uh, 240 in the pot. Uh, so my single pair hands are gonna continue, even like my ace highs, like ace king, ace queen, would wanna continue here. Uh, I think there would be even more of a chance if I have like king, queen of clubs. <clears throat> really no way to, to, to reach showdown enough for this to be a profitable continue. <clears throat> 